Hello from outside in the Saskatchewan wilderness. In the snow. So I have a, a weird I had a weird dream. I dreamt <coughs> that sorry, it's a little it makes you cough on here. Anyway, I had a dream that my five-year-old daughter, Elle, was me, John, and Elle were together. And Elle was being taught by a class by a professor. She was in a class with a bunch of other five-year-olds. For some reason, a woman professor was teaching. She wasn't, I don't know why a professor would do that. And she was talking, and she was singling Elle out, and kind of and giving her hat for a lot of things. And I don't know why John and I were standing there watching. I can't remember if there was any other parents. And I thought, that is totally not fair. So, so we, I was gonna, we were going to say something, both John and I wanted to say something after the class was over. But John decided that, and this is unlike him in real life, very, totally, he decided that he was going to pretend that he spoke Chinese. That he was English, but he had a Chinese accent, and he spoke, well, Chinese is a language, but he, some language in Chinese. Or, as far as I know, Chinese is not language. So anyhow... So we went up to the professor, Elle was no longer there, and John was speaking in this Chinese accent, and I knew that he was having lots of fun speaking in this Chinese accent, which was great. And so it's like, and he was doing okay, but I just knew somehow that the professor knew, or had an inkling, that John was faking it. And so I kind of, I, I warned John that the professor was going to call him on pretending to be Chinese, but not really being Chinese, not really speaking Chinese. And so I said, John, if she, she's going to say something to you, and your response, she'll, she'll ask you to say something in Chinese, in something that's Chinese, and your response should be to, to say, it was sent, I, I can't remember what sentence I said, but say this sentence, because I know what it means, I forget how I knew what it meant, but say it, and then you can say what you said. I was like, I thought it was a good idea, but he just brushed me off and didn't listen to me. And just like I had anticipated, she said to him, well, um, can you speak a Chinese sentence to me? And I, oh, I also told him, aside, when I did the little aside thing, I said, she's also going to ask you what language you speak, if it's Cantonese or Mandarin. And I was like, and you should say Mandarin, because... That is the language that most Chinese people speak. And so she asked him a sentence, and he just made up something that sounded Chinese. And she looked at him like, and he didn't do bad, so she looked at him like he was a little bit crazy. And then she said, I actually speak Chinese. And that, there she asked what that meant, he said. And it was something really crazy about his mother or something. And like, yeah, from what I know, that's not what that means. She's like, which Chinese language are you speaking? And he said the opposite of what I told him to say. So the less popular, the less widely spoken. And I was just like, well, why did you say that? At least you sound more credible if you speak what most people speak. But so she was like totally, she had totally decided that he was alive. And I don't know what was going to happen to us and to Al because of that. But anyway, it was really embarrassing. All of a sudden she disappeared. There was these people there that I thought were Chinese. And also they appeared, I think it was a husband and wife. And she hugged me. Sorry. The, the wife hugged us, both of us. And I kind of thought they weren't going to like us. But they hugged us. And they were just like super accepting of us. And I don't exactly know why she hugged us. And that was that. And oh, no, that was not that. And then she said, oh, I'm not Chinese. I'm, we're not Chinese. We're Korean. I felt kind of bad for that mistake. And then suddenly, John and I weren't in that place anymore. We were in a stairwell. And we were walking down to the, a parkade underground where our vehicle was parked. And we'd been walking a little, we'd walked a little ways. And then I said, John, I was like, there's an elevator over know, somewhere. We should go to an elevator and we should get it to take us down to the parkade so we can get in our vehicle. And there was this little window that I hadn't noticed on the side of, on the, on the wall, obviously. And 
it was looking out towards the parquet and he said look, look through that window and I did and th right there was the parquet I think I could see our truck and I was like oh I was like that's great he's like we just have to walk through the door we don't have to we're at the parquet I was like okay that's awesome so we walked out onto, into the parquet and there were all these pillars and stuff and John started running ahead of me in the parquet and for me in real life I have a hard time in structures such as parquet because they're terrifying and they're cement and they're open and things like that. Not well done. And so John runs ahead of me and I think people, him and people that know my problem have always, like in the past when I used to have seizures, and I do now, well I don't really have seizures but they're controlled but I still have a phobia. And people don't generally, that are close to me, don't generally run far away from me, especially in a situation like a parquet because they know that she'll freak out. And John's running away and he's teasing me. And he's like, ha ha, can't get me kind of thing. And I'm like, get back here, John. And he's like, ha ha, can't get me. And he's, trying to, he's getting out of my reach. And he keeps running. And I realize I'm anticipating what's happening, a bad thing, like a, a panic attack coming on, because that's what I've been doing for a long time. But I wasn't fearful. There's a difference between fearful and anticipating fear of a panic attack, kind of. I don't know if that makes sense, but it does to me because I'm living it. So anyhow, that's what happened, and then we just, that was kind of the end of that dream. I'm not sure if I woke up, but it was done. So I have, you you can choose, if you want to use the model of title, it's called T, title, emotion, action. And then I like thinking of a setting because that's often helpful. Sometimes I have dreams that really, I just know that they don't, they're not symbolic at all, that like, I dreamt last night of, of a lady named Michelle that I know. And it wasn't that I dreamt of her, I don't think, for some other reason. I dreamt of Rochelle because I needed to tell her something that was going on in our community. And so that reminded me to tell her. And that was, I'm pretty sure, because God does that sometimes with me. He'll just help me by remembering stuff. And that was something that he did. Just one moment. I was going to tell you something. My cat's on the roof. The cat's on the roof. I'm just about done now. So... Anyway, title usually is like whatever the climax of the dream was. So you can listen to my dream of what was the climax. Emotion, what do you think the emotion was that I had? The central, the most important, like the most prevalent emotion. And what do you think the most prevalent action was? And I don't know what the setting is, but if you tell me what the action and emotion are, then let's just see if I can come up with a setting. And we can come up with an interpretation. So let's just get to work.